Calcium imaging allows us to study the movement of calcium ions into and out of the cytoplasm in response to a variety of physiological stimuli. To begin calcium imaging experiments in cortical neurons, cells are loaded with the calcium indicator dye FURA2AM, mounted on a perfusion chamber in FURA2 free media, and placed on a fluorescence microscope where they are hit with light at 340 and then 380 nanometer in wavelength, which is absorbed by the dye. 505 nanometer emissions from the dye at these two wavelengths are collected, and the level of intracellular calcium can be calculated from the ratio of these values. Hi, and I'm Mara Barreto from the laboratory of Ricardo Domich in the Department of Neurobiology at Stanford University. Today, we will show you a procedure for measuring intracellular calcium elevations in neurons. So, let's get started. The cortical neurons used for this calcium imaging procedure can be grown using established techniques, but should be plated on 15 mm number one glass cover slips because low fluorescence imaging of live cells is best achieved with high numerical aperture objectives that require oil. In addition, we pre-coat the glass cover slips with polyornithine and laminin in order to prevent the cells from detaching or moving during imaging experiments. A variety of physiological solutions, including cell culture media, can be used for calcium imaging experiments. However, make sure that the solutions are free of phenol red, which greatly increases the fluorescent background. For cortical neurons, we use tyroid solution, which mimics cerebrospinal fluid, and we supplement it with 0.1% bovine serum albumin. To begin the cell loading step, Prepare a 1 millimolar stock of acetoxy methyl ester FURA2 or FURA2 AM. To do this, add 50 microliters of DMSO to a 50 microgram vial of FURA2 AM. It is important to use dry DMSO packed under nitrogen, and it is necessary to remove the DMSO with a needle by puncturing the septum to prevent hydration of the DMSO. When not in use, Keep the FURA2 AM solution in a dark, dry place. FURA2 AM in DMSO is stable at room temperature for 24 hours. It is also stable at negative 20 degrees for several months. Next, aliquot 2 milliliters of culture media into a 15 milliliter conical tube that has been warmed to 37 degrees Celsius. Then add 2 microliters of FURA2 AM stock to generate a 1 micromolar FURA2 AM solution. Vortex the solution vigorously for a couple of seconds. Transfer this loading solution to a 35 mm tissue culture dish. Using forceps, place the cover slip with the cortical neurons into the dish. Incubate the neurons at 37 degrees for 30 minutes in a dark incubator. Time the incubation precisely. During the incubation, prepare another 35 mm tissue culture dish containing 2 mL of tissue culture media without FURA 2 AM. When the incubation is complete, Remove the cover slip from the loading solution and place in the new dish. After immersing the cover slip in FURA 2 AM free media, mount it onto an imaging chamber. We use the RC20H imaging chamber by Warner Instruments. Apply vacuum grease to both sides of the chamber. Then place the cover slip onto the chamber and gently press it into position. Next, screw in the side clamps, then insert the cover slip retainer ring. Once the cells are mounted and the imaging chamber is assembled, proceed with the calcium imaging step. For calcium imaging of cells, 
We use an inverted Nikon Eclipse TE2000U microscope equipped with a Xenon arc lamp, Sutter Instruments, an automated stage, Ludl, and a cooled charge couple device, CCD camera, Hamatsu Orca 2. The microscope is controlled by a Macintosh computer running open lab software in provision. To begin imaging, calibrate the automated microscope stage to ensure that the appropriate coordinates are found. Then place a drop of oil on the objective. For imaging, we use 40, 60, or 100 time Nikon Floor oil immersion objectives with an NA exceeding 1.2. Next, load the tyroid solution into the input line, taking care to prevent the formation of air bubbles. Then, connect the chamber to the input perfusion lines and perfuse tyroid solution through the chamber. Perfuse slowly to avoid the formation of air bubbles in the chamber. Now secure the chamber on the microscope stage and install the output perfusion line, which is connected to a suction line. Apply the input solution to confirm that the perfusion lines are connected. You should hear the input solution being aspirated into the output line. After connecting the perfusion lines, focus on the cells using transmitted light. Once the cells are in focus, Open the fluorescent shutter and look through the eyepieces to examine the fluorescence of the cells using illumination at 340 and 380 nanometer wavelengths. Resting cells should be dim at 340 and bright at 380. To prevent phototoxicity, the intensity of the excitation light should be reduced with a neutral density filter and cells should not be illuminated with UV light for more than 10 or 15 seconds. Now examine the cells using the camera and set the gain and exposure of the camera to generate an image that is close to saturation when illuminated at 380 nanometers and well below saturation when illuminated at 340 nanometers. Keep the exposure time at 200 milliseconds or shorter if possible. Once set, do not change the camera gain or exposure. Collect an image at each wavelength and use the Region of Interest tool, or ROI tool, to measure the background intensity in a variety of locations for each wavelength. Calculate the average of the background values and then enter the background values into the appropriate locations in the imaging program. The background intensity will be subtracted from each pixel in the field. Next, enter the maximum and minimum ratio values, or Rmin and Rmax, which were determined previously. Once the Rmin and Rmax are set, choose the fields that you plan to image, and then use the automated stage to record the location of each field of view into the software program. We generally collect five fields of view. Now start the experiment and collect images. During an experiment, the automated stage moves to a field, collects a ratio of the images at 340 and 380 nanometers, then moves on to the next field until it returns to the first field. So if you need to collect images quickly, then only collect ratio images from a single field. Note, when testing the calcium imaging system, it is often useful to use high concentrations of stimuli that will cause an intracellular calcium rise, such as 65 millimolar potassium. Once the experiment is complete, proceed with the results analysis. To analyze the results of the experiment, convert the set of ratio images into time-lapse calcium measurements for individual cells, or regions of interest within cells. To do this, use the ROI tool to define the areas of the ratio image in which you want to measure calcium. It is generally useful to have at least one ROI that covers the cell body of the cell. Once the ROIs are defined, use the software to collect time-lapse ratio measurements for each ROI in each image. 
import the ratio measurements into an analysis program, such as Igor Pro, in order to convert the ratio measurements into intracellular calcium values. We use a set of macros written in Igor Pro to help us carry out the analysis. This is a calcium imaging movie of Fura 2 loaded neurons stimulated with potassium chloride. The image is pseudo-colored, so that low Fura 2 ratios, which correspond to low calcium concentrations, are blue, and high ratios, which correspond to high calcium concentrations, are yellow and red. But upon depolarization with potassium chloride, which opens voltage-gated calcium channels, calcium rises, and the Fura 2 340 to 380 excitation ratio increases, causing the neurons to become yellow and red. The calcium is then removed from the cytoplasm, which causes the cells to become blue again. These images were analyzed, and the ratio values were converted to calcium concentrations using a simple equation and the program Igor Pro. We just showed you how to perform calcium imaging of cortical neurons using Fura 2 AM. When doing this procedure, it's important to remember to not use tissue culture plastic since it's often fluorescent at ultraviolet wavelengths, which makes imaging difficult. Also, make sure to avoid air bubbles when perfusing the solution through the chamber. So, that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.